To be asked, Tim versus Chris. Right, so we're backstage. How are you feeling, boys? Chris can't speak. Tim, he can't speak either. Are you really that scared? We, we've been in no, radio, you do a bit okay. of stage stuff. And you, you get used to doing stage stuff, but it's always kind of like bringing other people on or whatever. There's five minutes, go and have fun. We just walked, we literally just walked down the stairs there, you know, which bring you out to the stage. We are literally backstage, there's only a curtain between us and the crowd. And uh, Chris and I just literally said, this is it. We're just hanging ourselves out to dry right now. In all seriousness, like you're this, walking the plank, isn't it? this is the worst Tim vs Chris we've ever done. And the best Tim vs Chris we've ever done as far as stimulating emotions. <laughs> Does that mean anything, Chris, as well? Oh. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't. Should we hug it out? Yeah. Let's hug it out. Come on, all together. <laughs> Good luck, boys. Good luck. Oh, right, let's do it, come on. So please go mad for your first act on, it's Christopher Dean! <laughs> Killed uh, 30 seconds at least. <laughs> Four minutes 30 to go. And counting. Uh, well, hello. hello. I'm Chris from 2BR. Yeah. Any, uh, any fans of the show in? Yeah. Literally, my girlfriend's mum cheered and my girlfriend. <laughs> the rest of the reaction was a little underwhelming. Um, I present the afternoon show on, uh, on 2BR. Um, Full of travel news and weather, of course. There is a full five-day local forecast at 2br.co.uk. Uh, we just nick it from the Met Office. And every so often, they'll put up weather alerts, like, red warning, heavy rain. I checked at the beginning of the week, and there was a yellow snow warning. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> you know, I wanted the weather, not, uh, not patronising life advice. Um, used to do the breakfast show. Which was good fun. Uh, you'll meet the new breakfast show presenter in a bit. He's got an unfair advantage. Just looks a bit weird, you know. He's <laughs> okay, his last that way. Uh, my breakfast show, the, uh, the critics, uh, my bosses said it was award winning. The judges, no, didn't, which is a shame. Um, <laughs> that was my girlfriend laughing, which is <laughs> demoralising. I'm being filmed and recorded for the radio. Stick it on the website. Um, which reminds me, don't, please don't heckle, because I can't do anything other than say thanks ever so much for the feedback, I'll, uh, I'll bear that in mind for next time. And of course, you know, no one's paid good hard-earned money to hear your opinion. You've not paid good hard-earned money to hear, to hear mine as well. Um, thank you, Fred. Uh, my girlfriend, as I say, is here tonight. Um, I told her about this Tim versus Chris challenge, came scampering home and was like, oh, ho, ho. next Tim versus Chris, it's going to be stand-up at a real comedy event. And she looked at me and I went, but you're the least funny person I've ever met. Her genuine words. I think essentially she doesn't get my joke, she doesn't understand them. Uh, this one I did nick to be fair, but it's a belter. Came out one day and said, oh, babe, watched a brilliant documentary yesterday about uh, how they build ships and hold boats together. Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, nothing. I'm like, riveting. Sounds quite boring, actually. Like, Hello. <laughs> uh, everyone else I've told about tonight, they've gone, oh, here's a gag for you, you can use. I've got a few of them here. Recommendations from friends and colleagues. How many dancers does it take to change a light bulb? Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Not mine. How do you get Pikachu onto a bus? Pokemon. Pokemon. Brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs> Read a great book about healing the other day. Couldn't put it down. <laughs> and how do you tell the gender of an ant? Drop it in a glass of water. If it sinks, girl ant. If it floats, boy ant. Bev, buoyant means um, less dense than water, means to float. 
Okay, that's, it's, it's a play on words. Sounds like boy hunt. It's, uh, it's quite, a good, quite a good joke. Uh, girlfriend's mum's here as well. You know Diane, where are you? <laughs> First time I met Diane, guess what I did? In her own home, okay? In her own home, sitting down to a lovely home cooked meal. Um, forget what it was, something with too much gravy. She, she is from Nelson. Um, odd decision to make that joke. Uh, I was doing my best to be charming. She was nervous, had a celebrity in her house. <laughs> and she started telling a story about shopping. She said, Sarah, me and your dad was at the Trafford Centre. <laughs> Sorry, can I just interrupt you there, Diane? Uh, that should be, your dad and I were at the Trafford Centre. <laughs> Corrected the grammar, in her own home. <laughs> I get accused of being posh quite a lot. I'm not, I, you know, I just grew up in a different part of the world. I lo this is home now, I live in Carl, and it's genuinely, I love living up here, I genuinely do, but people assume I'm posh because of the way I speak. I come from a part of the world where we say bath instead of bath, where we arrange sentences differently, some would say more accurately. That's not for now, though. <laughs> but I bring it on myself for the old posh thing. I popped into, um, into Asda, just for the one item. Um, so I thought I'll pay at the kiosk, you know, where they, the tracksuit people buy fags and scratch cards. Or more fags with their scratch card winnings. I put my, uh, put my item on the counter. Woman looked baffled, thought bless. She was like, what's that? I said, it's balsamic vinegar. I'm making a red wine jus. Uh, thank you for being very, very kind to me. Uh, Tim's up next, be kind to him as well. And thank you for having us on. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good day. Right, are we ready for your next act? Yeah. Is the next act here? Sure. He's there. He's not going to run it. Let me just check. No, he's there. Right, girls in the house, make some noise. Fells in the house, make some noise. Two behind the house, make some noise. Let's sing your chest! Bloody hell. Pop this here for a bit and try and entertain you lot, I guess. What do you call a judge with no fingers? Justice fingers. Justice thumbs, close mate, nearly, justice thumbs. Um, this is a nerve-wracking thing to do and I was trying to sort of think to myself, what should I talk about on the stage? And I think it's important when you do stand-up comedy to talk, to talk about things that you know the most. And I went to the doctors uh, the other day and I got diagnosed uh, with something pretty serious. Um, the doctor informed me that uh, on my elbow here, uh, I've got an L boob. Ooh. It's an unfortunate thing. It's a, it's a lump on my elbow. Would you like to see my L boob? Who would like to see my L boob? Would you like to see my L boob? You're interested at the front here. You don't want to see my. Hey, on this table, would you like to see my L boob? Would you like to see my L boob, sir? What's your name, mate? Jim, would you mind if I just. Oh, God. Jim, hold on a second, I just have to pop the mic. <laughs> this is my L boob, Jim, here, yeah, can you see it? Can you see it? It essentially looks like I've got a breast on my elbow. It's nothing to worry about, it's just fluid build-up. Jim, would you like to touch my L boob? It's nice. Jim, would you like to kiss my L boob? Give my L boob a kiss, Jim! He doesn't want to kiss it. Just give Jim a round of applause there. I've just moved to the area. I've been living abroad for a few years and we've just moved back to the UK. We now live in East Lancashire. Thank you, Jim, by the way. Um, but I've lived abroad for seven years and I, I learnt a little bit of Cantonese. I lived in Hong Kong and I, I learnt a little bit of Cantonese. Um, I'll just teach you a bit of simple, basic Cantonese just in case you find yourself in Southeast Asia. Yes and no, my friends, is very simple. It's hi, mm, hi. All right, you just put an mm in front of it to make it the negative. The problem with Cantonese is it's tonal, right? So if you say something in a different tone, it means something completely different. The word hi, said like this, hi, 
means the worst possible swear word you can imagine. But when I first got to Hong Kong, I learnt my address, and I was quite proud of this, I learnt my address. It's uh, Yi Sup Ho, Song Wan Do, Wong Chuk Hang. And I got into a taxi, I thought, I'm going to try it out in the cabin. I'm going to try it out, I'm going to brave it, I'm going to brave it. Got in the taxi, sit in the back in Hong Kong. Got in the back, said to the driver, I said, Yi Sup Ho, Song Wan Do, Wong Chuk Hang. And he looked at me in the mirror and he went, Yi Sup Ho, Song Wan Do, Wong Chuk Hang. And rather than say, yes, 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 I went, hi, 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 essentially calling him the worst possible word in the world over and over again, which is a bit of a nuisance, to be honest. I've got quite a few mates and family members now with babies, uh, so I don't have kids myself, so I've had to master the art of looking like a gibbish when they tell me that they're pregnant, uh, which I have done, and it goes a little bit like this. It's very straightforward, it's very simple. Just tilt your head to one side like that, and you just go like this. Oh, that's beautiful, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that. My sister two weeks ago told me she was pregnant with a second child. It applies to relatives as well, you just literally go like this. Oh, that's beautiful, sister. Like that. You can literally apply it to anyone. My best mate's just had a baby. I sent him a message at the weekend, actually. I'm just reading this text. You know, people change, don't they? Your priorities change. And I sent him a message going, How was your weekend? That's all I put. How was your weekend, mate? This is what he responded with. Really nice, thanks, Timmy. Timmy. Fiona's mum had Ollie for a couple of hours yesterday. We went out. We bought Ollie a pop-up book. Some things from Boots. We had some lunch whilst talking about Ollie. Then we went to Max Spielman and printed photos of Ollie. We even laughed and smiled to each other about funny nappy incidents. Even without Ollie, we realised everything we do in our lives revolves around Ollie. The most important thing in my life, I think, is my phone. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Um, when I first got my job in radio, it was quite a cool thing to do. This is ten years ago or something now, Jim, to be honest with you. Uh, but the problem with working in radio now is that people just assume uh, you, you kind of talk a bit like this. Hi, my name's Tim and I broadcast on 99.8 FM. Which is kind of a bit true, I guess, in some respects. Uh, I'll leave you with this. When I, when I left my old job, uh, I had a, an email off a, a, a listener, which I'll just read you very quickly. Uh, this comes from... An email, uh, it's called Mr. Wan Chai, he was called, um, and he wrote the following. Dear little child, not even Tim, just little child, I can't believe you're leaving Radio 3. I used to like listening to you, but now I've changed my mind. I thought you were loyal to Hong Kong. Why go back to England? I hope your new venture goes badly and you feel the cold. Tim. I don't like you anymore. In fact, I think you're a massive hi. <laughs> kind regards, Mr. Wan Chai. Uh, listen, thanks for putting up with us tonight. We appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. We're going to let you go. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the votes have been counted. And the winner, it is Tim! I was going to say, <laughs> I was just going to say, it's got to the point in the night where people are just grunting. This man just went, that's all he did. And that was uh, enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for voting me. It's over to you, Boogaloo Fish. Thank you. And, uh, that means we do have to get him on stage in, in last place. <laughs> <laughs> in last place.